Imagine if an island blew up, exploded in the middle of the ocean. What would happen? I can imagine what would happen. Everyone would start tweeting and emailing each other and taking pictures. And then after that, the newspapers and the media would get interested. And then after all that had died down, the scientists had come in and they'd figure out what happened and do a big report and then we'd know exactly why the island had exploded. Do you know what? An island did explode in 1883. And although the technology was different, that's pretty much what happened. Keith, we are of course talking about Krakatoa. Yep, it was a massive explosion and it's the one where it said the earth rang like a bell. It really was a big one. But you're quite right about the technology. There was the electric telegraph and therefore people could hear about it and report on their experiences of it. And the other reason so many people knew about Krakatoa was you could hear it thousands of miles away. The shockwave actually went around the earth a few times. Yep. And tidal waves as well, of course, uh, went uh, right the way around. So the um, Royal Society decided needed to, to capture some of this information. Let's start with this box here because this is a box full of letters that people have written from all around the world. The Royal Society for the first time decided to harness people power to do a bit of science, what we would now call citizen science. They placed an advertisement in the Times newspaper and other kinds of journals and therefore people began to write in about what they had seen. These are actually letters from here in Great Britain. Great Britain, yeah. Quite a long way from Indonesia where this explosion yeah. happened. Someone's written in, Dear Sir, the sky tints of the last week have been so remarkable that I venture to give you a short description of them. I noticed a very peculiar glow surrounding the sun, close around a very soft, pearly white light, which gradually deepened. No. And as far as I could judge, the whole phenomena extended to about 18 degrees or 20 degrees from the sun. This letter has come from Zanzibar. The boys from the mission schools were much amused by finding on the beach stones which would float. So this will be pumice of volcanic right. stones. Yes, absolutely. Also afterwards, they told Miss Allen that there were a quantity of human skulls and bones all along the beach at high water mark. Thousands and thousands of people lost their life as a result of this, so mm. it was a, it was quite the event. So there we go. That's a more uh, confronting letter, isn't it? Look at all of these newspaper clippings. So this one here from is that Times of Ceylon? Yes. Uh -huh. Consensus of opinion to be gathering from our Indian contemporaries in reference to the green and orange colours recently noticed when looking at the sun is in favour of the theory advanced by us from the first, namely that it was owing to the presence in the atmosphere of a considerable quantity of sulphurous dust conveyed from the Java volcanoes. This is one of the first occasions when they realised that there are high winds up there, what we now know as jet streams, uh, and that was transporting uh, volcanic dust. This is a letter where people are actually in some disagreement. Basically, this person is writing in to disagree with someone else who claimed that all the weird colours around the sun may have been caused by a comet striking the sun. Yeah. He surely cannot deny what I asserted with reference to them, namely that volcanic forces have been abnormally active during the period of the glows. Yep. He's saying, how can you be blaming a comet hitting the sun when all these volcanoes are going off? Absolutely right, yes. People were also sending in pictures of the things they were saying. This is Guildford, again here in, here in Britain. This is the, the sort of phenomenon that most people would have seen. These afterglows were very widely reported and, and very beautiful. That's another afterglow. But this one here is really interesting. It's a parhelia, it's a mock sun, which is an atmospheric phenomenon that you can see. Actually, it's not too rare, but again, they're linking this with possibly what had happened in Krakatoa. So, after all this had died down, the scientists got to business. That's right. So they took all of this information and they produced the definitive report on Krakatoa and the eruption. And we've got it here. Yes, let's have a look at that. So here's the report. Have a look at this front of space. Whoa! Again, these are more of these amazing sunsets and glows that were being seen. Yeah. Twilight and afterglow effects at Chelsea, London. November 1883. So this is this is you know, some time after the eruption now. 
That's right, and, and you know, they're considered so beautiful that the paintings were exhibited at the Royal Society. This has got everything in it, hasn't it? All the pictures and all the That's maps. That's right. So it's divided into sections depending upon the kind of phenomena being talked about. And you can see here there are drawings of the volcano. There are reports on the kinds of volcanic dust being thrown out, and you'll find some microscope specimens there. So this is pumice and dust collected from Krakatoa and sectioned and placed under the microscope. Tables of information, barograms, it's famously this big change in pressure that was going around the world. But mm. these are the tidal waves. So you can see here's wave number one, first passage from Krakatoa to the Antipodes. Map showing the places at which the sounds of the explosions were heard on August 26 and 27. So each of those black spots shows where someone reported hearing this explosion. The explosion happened there at the crosshairs at Krakatoa. And have a look here. In the centre of Australia, people reported hearing it. Perhaps one of the most famous images of the Krakatoa eruption is here in the report as well. This is taken from a photograph. So this is still at, a, at an early stage of the eruption. It's not the whole massive explosion. No. Um, I think anyone who saw that probably wouldn't be around to take a photo. I, or... I wouldn't be holding a camera right there, I don't think, no. So this is May 1883. The eruption happened at the end of August in 1883. So whoever got this picture was lucky enough to be further away when it actually went off. Let's hope a long way away, yeah. Here's the first picture. The writing's coming through from the page behind, but there's like a hand-drawn sketch of a volcano. And if we turn to the next page, there's another drawing. But it looks like someone's writing something and then they're drawing all these sketches. You're going to have to put us out of our misery. What's going on here and how does this fit into what we've already seen? 